All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to what should be the final credits to the main story of The Witcher 3, Wicked here. And um, where we left off, we went ahead and fast traveled to uh, the signpost right here close to the end. If uh, anyone remembers, this is the starting. I'll just show you real quick before we actually start this cutscene. But this is kind of that... Um, yeah, the White Orchard. It's the area you start in. It's kind of a, a little small... I guess you can call it a... Whoop, that's not... The, yeah, that is the right place. Kind of a tutorial area. All the enemies here are kind of lower base, and you've got the smaller area to mess with. Yep, this is where we started. That's where we started talking to Vesemir at the very beginning of the game. Gosh, that's been forever ago. I almost don't remember it. But, um... <laughs> I believe we're going to get a final credits roll and uh, several trophies since we did, uh, I didn't show you, since we've only had a handful of episodes and it started at the very end of the game, but I did play the entirety of this thing on Death March. So. Is it done? Yes. <gasps> She's Did not dead. I have no idea. For the cockatrice. And we've a new contract. It won't pay much, but I think it worth the toil. You've been busy. Well, I honestly thought that the choices I made screwed up and ended up with her it's killed. Yours. A sword, swallow. Oh, beautiful. May I? Not here. You'll have ample opportunity soon enough, Witcher. Ooh, those eyes. Let's try it out then. Do we get to fight something else? Oh. Radovid had many faults. He was cruel, impetuous, and pathologically ambitious. But he was a tactical genius. That's undeniable. Commanding forces far outnumbered by his foes, he handily defeated the invader from the south. The Redanian Eagle spread its wings, taking all the north, including Novigrad, beneath them. With victory in the war against Nilfgaard secured, Radovid proceeded to complete his witch hunt. Oh yeah, we never took Radovid out. Fires Oops. Into Maria and Edern, lands now liberated by the Redanian monarch. In the drive for moral renewal, simple herbalists, pellers, healers, and non-humans, all supposed heretics, were murdered in droves. For many, freedom beneath Radovid's scepter proved more tragic than servitude to another. As long as his armies went from one victory to the next, Emir's subjects remained boundlessly obedient. When a string of humiliating defeats proved Var Emri's fallible, the opposition, thus far secret, attacked. The subjects of the Emperor who had danced on the graves of his foes laid him to rest in a tomb of his own. While the continent bled engulfed by war, Skellica bloomed under Ceres's enlightened rule. Unlike those who had come before her, the young queen did not raid foreign shores looking instead to her people, tending to her land. The island-bound nation prospered, though its fangs of yore were dulled. I did a lot of good work Sevilla, there. Fiona, Ellen, Rhiannon, heir to Nilfgaard's throne, chose the life of a witcher on the path. Geralt taught her all he knew, every skill he possessed, then each set off on their own. Soon, word of the ashen-haired witcheress had spread throughout the north. From the Yoruga, to the mountains of Kovir. While monarchs moved borders and populations, Geralt and Yennefer lived a calm, quiet life, far from all things political. They Sweet. breakfasted well after noon, more often than not in bed, and passed the days on lazy strolls and long conversations. Boring, you say? Perhaps. But both had sought this more than anything else. Well, other than forgetting to kill Radovid and leaving the 
entire world in shambles. <laughs> Turned out pretty good. <laughs> well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of The Witcher, at least as the way I played it. Um, I did at one point have the vast majority of this playthrough on YouTube, and uh, now that we're several videos into this and we have a little bit of time while the end credits roll, I'll try to briefly, without boring you too much, hopefully state kind of uh, why they're all gone, along with many, many other videos from other um, series and games. Um, my gameplay was suffering because I would stop to think about what to say. And then my commentary was suffering because I was too focused on trying to be a good gamer in front of an audience. And uh, because of doing those two things and with a trash internet connection here, uh, it was taking me way too long to get anywhere. And uh, so I stopped doing videos altogether. Uh, got behind on getting some games completed. And um, that frustration led me to stop doing videos altogether. And now that uh, our internet issues are so hopefully fixed, I want to do better quality videos for you guys, be more entertaining. I will still more than likely not be editing anything. It'll just strictly be play. But um, I want to provide something that's entertaining to you guys, but um, I'm not a try hard. I do consider myself pretty good at video games, but uh, I really got to hand it to the guys that do this for a living or do this uh, in a public facet because trying to talk about your gameplay or talk about something that's not relevant while you're gaming even even for the videos is completely different than being in a party and talking amongst friends and uh, it definitely takes a lot of your cognitive power to do that and so um, I really didn't expect how much it would affect my gameplay and how much I would forget to say things, kind of how much blanks I would draw while talking, while playing. And so uh, I just really, I wasn't happy with the quality of, I probably had 250 videos or something, but again, it was before PlayStation had the 30 minute limits. The 15 minute was the cap on the video. So it was a bunch of really short videos, um, Witcher, Dark Souls, uh, you name it. I had a lot of stuff. But um, I, I just wasn't happy with them, and so I deleted them all, so that way they weren't watered down and hard to get to some better content. So um, we're going to actually be um, getting away from the Witcher now for a little while. I'm going to continue my level 1 scrub playthrough on Dark Souls for a bit, and uh, maybe even jump onto some other games. But we will, without a doubt, be returning uh, on camera to finish the two DLCs. And uh, again, I appreciate everybody sticking with me. Uh, hopefully, I will bring you guys something on a consistent basis that uh, entertains you and gives you a idea of what to expect from these games. Also, expect to see some reviews from games that I complete as well. Uh, probably won't be talking about the industry as, as a whole too much. I won't be talking about new things coming out, uh, at least not for the foreseeable future, just because I'm not in the loop enough to be able to talk about them. I uh, don't have time to do enough research to give you anything that I could find credible. All I have is kind of hearsay and stuff like that. So expect reviews, expect playthroughs, expect me to be terrible and to not be so upset about the fact that I'm terrible from here on out and hopefully give you guys something to laugh about and enjoy watching. So without further ado, thank you guys so very much. This was an um, extremely good game. Um, if you haven't already done it, go pick up the Game of the Year edition. Get on The Witcher. Now that I learned how to play the combat, take my advice from that thing. Do the quick dodges. Do the quick steps. Play this game. There is a breadth of stuff in it. Um, definitely warrants multiple playthroughs. There's a new Game Plus feature in it, and it is without question one of the best open-world fantasy medieval RPGs to date. Um, it far pales its two predecessors, even though those were excellent games as well. But um, CD Projekt Red really took 
to heart the fact that they were moving to consoles with this version over the, the two PC ones, the uh, one and two, and um, they did everything right. So it, it's worth anyone on whatever format you play it on it's it's a, a game to get even if you're maybe not necessarily a huge rpg fan there's still so much just great content here that it's worth getting so um again you can always put it on an easier difficulty setting and and work around the combat so to speak if you're not a uh, action rpg person there's there's plenty of deep story and side quest and the main storyline as well uh there's just there's something i think for everybody here there's a lot of uh, immense detail in the uh, aesthetics and the graphics and uh, so there's just something to experience for anyone who would call themselves a gamer or a someone who's appreciative of gaming art. So uh, this has been Wicked, and this has been The Scrubber 3, <laughs> and uh, I'll be signing off.